I will invite you to stand and join me in the pledge, and then Amelia Taldo will bring the invocation. Lord, I pray for the protection of all the people of Springdale, and I pray for those suffering, and I give you thanks for the beauty that you have given us in every moment of today. I pray, Lord, that our community work, sorry, and our community work together for the common good, and that you will help this council seek your wisdom as we make decisions on behalf of our residents. Help this city continue to prosper and provide an abundance of services and opportunities to all our residents. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Amelia. All right, I would like to again welcome you here tonight. This is tonight's uh, uh, a regular meeting of the Springdale City Council. This is Tuesday, September 10th, 2024. And we will begin our meeting by asking our city clerk to call the roll. Mayor Sprouse. Here. Brian Powell. Here. Amelia Taldo. Here. Jeff Watson. Here. Mike Overton. Here. Mike Lawson. Here. Rex Bailey. Present. Randall Harriman. Here. Mark Fujeris. Here. Ernest Cage. Here. All right, thank you. Uh, this is item four on our agenda. We're This is the uh, portion of each council meeting that we open up for public comments. The council will hear your comments. Uh, we ask that you come to the, uh, if you'd like to address the council, that you come to the podium, clearly state your name and address. Please keep your comments brief and understand the council won't be taking action tonight on whatever you bring forward. Um, is there anyone that would like to address the city council concerning an item that is not already on tonight's agenda? All right, seeing none, we'll move on to item five, approval of minutes. Council, I'd entertain a motion to approve them if presented. If so there moved. are no changes. Second. Okay. We got a motion and a second to approve the minutes as presented. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. All right, thank you. Item six, procedural motions. What's your pleasure, council? I move for A and B. Second. Got a motion and a second for A and B. Roll call, please. Oh, yeah. That's, not up. That's what threw me. Are we ready, guys? There we go. Procedural motions, call for the vote. Carries 8 0. All right, thank you. All right, I'm going to ask, we've got representatives here from the Daughters of the American Rev Rez Revolution, and I've got a proclamation to present. If someone would like to meet me, or all of you, is fine, however you want to do it. We're wonderful. Good, good. good. That's right, that's right. Good to see you. You've been very gracious. Carolyn. Carolyn, nice and her daughters. Yes. Yeah. Oh, great. Nice to meet you all. All right. I've got a, uh, I'd like to present this proclamation. Uh, and then certainly if you'd like to say anything, I'd be happy to we are turn just over the microphone. We are honored that you have agreed to do this. You, the mayor's been very gracious in the past. He has worked with us on doing proclamations. And he even came to one of our special needs classrooms two years ago. Yeah. The kids were thrilled. And he was very gracious and answered all their questions. So, again, thanks for helping thanks. us proclaim another 248 years. All right. Thank you. I answered all the questions. She didn't say I answered them all right. But, <laughs> but anyway. Uh, all right. Here's a proclamation from the Office of the Mayor of the City of Springdale. Whereas on September 17th, 2024, and the week following, we celebrate the 237th anniversary of the 1787 Constitutional Convention, and at this convention, the world's oldest written constitution was drafted by the United States, thus outlining the fundamental principles by which our nation is governed. And whereas on September 17, 1787, after four months of debate, highlighted by sharp differences of view and wise compromises, the outstanding leaders of our republic who were meeting in the convention at Philadelphia signed the Constitution of the United States of America. And whereas Congress, by joint resolution approved August 2nd, 1956, requested President Dwight David Eisenhower to set aside 
the week of September 17th through September 23rd as Constitution Week, a time for the contemplation and commemoration of the historic acts which resulted in the formation of our Constitution. And whereas it is the privilege and duty of the American people to commemorate the 235th anniversary of the drafting of the Constitution of the United States of America with appropriate ceremonies and activities, and whereas it is fitting that every American should reflect upon the vision and fortitude of our forebearers in creating a charter designed to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty for themselves and for the fortunate millions who were to follow them as citizens of this nation. And whereas the story of the framing, signing, and adoption of the epical document uh, constitutes one of the most significant chapters in the history of our nation, and whereas the Constitution ensures the distribution of functions and responsibilities among three separate branches with a system of checks and balances to calibrate those powers, ultimately ensuring the protection of our individual rights and liberties. And whereas the Constitution of the United States of America, the guardian of our liberties, embodies the principles of limited government in a republic dedicated to the rule by law, there, now, therefore, I, Doug Sprouse, mayor of the city of Springdale, Arkansas, do hereby proclaim the week of September 17th through September 23rd, 2024, as Constitution Week in the city of Springdale, Arkansas. And I urge everyone to give solemn and grateful thought to the eventful week in September 1787, when our Constitution was delivered to the Continental Congress, signed and made known to the people of the country, thus laying the foundation for the birth of a new nation. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you all for being here. Yeah. Sure. I'll get around kind of behind here. Yeah. There we go. Thank you so much. All right, now we'll move on to item eight, uh, and Jill is here, the Downtown Springdale Alliance Quarterly Report. Welcome, Jill. Mayor and Honorable City, city Council, thank you guys so much for your service to the city of Springdale. We are busy at the Downtown Springdale Alliance office preparing to open Luther George Park, and that is the main thing that I wanted to a visit with you about today. I know you guys know all about it, but I think it's important in this moment to tell the story of how we got here. Uh, this property was donated to the city by the George family following um, the passing of Luther George. The park has served this community for many, many years. Um, it's gone through different iterations, and it has gone through its greatest iteration over the last 18 months. Um, Milestone Construction has, has led the efforts this was a design excellence grant um, provided by the Walton Family Foundation to the Downtown Springdale Alliance. In 2015, the city came together and envisioned what could downtown be. And one of the things on that list was to revitalize Luther George Park. And I just, I just wanna say to you and the other leaders that came before you, thank you for your vision, because without visionary leadership, like this, cities do not get to realize victories like this. You have to envision, it takes years for something like this to happen. Years and years ago, the land was donated, it was used, and then it was re-envisioned for how to revitalize for present day, and not just for the park, but the impact that this park is gonna make on downtown Springdale is, is just immeasurable. Um, as you can see, there's already a lot of construction happening all around the park. Uh, the east end of Emma is going to be transformed over the next few years. Uh, following this, the biggest, one of the largest projects that we look forward to seeing is the revitalization of the Jones Center campus or the building of the Jones Center campus in such a way that it really reflects this, the mission and the service that it provides to our community and connecting it to downtown Springdale. 
Um, another thing that we did in the beginning of preparing for this park is there was a Gale study done. And the Gale study, the consultants came in and they shared with us what is the, helped us formulate a mission for the park. And this mission will help guide the programming in the park, how we use the park. First, it guided the design of the park. We kept it in front of the construction team um, so that we stayed true to the original design. That has happened. And now we will use this same report to guide the programming for the park so that it is building the community that we all desire. It's inclusive. It will be inclusive. Artists will get their start on this stage. That is that is really exciting to uh, see how that's going to unfold in, coming, in the coming year, especially. Um, I'm not going to read the small print. I'll let you guys study that. This is just kind of the timeline that I went through. This was this was the night of my very first day in downtown Spring, Springdale um, as executive director, uh, January 22nd, 2019. Uh, Luke Parsons told me, he said, you've got to be here on this day because we're having this meeting to plan what we want in this park. And that is about all the information I had walking into that meeting. <laughs> and um, But th I still remember conversations that we had that night, meeting a lot of you on that evening. The the um, commitment that I saw in that evening, over 200 people showed up that night to say, this is what we want from Luther George Park. This is what we want it to, this is how we want it to serve our community. And it is, it is absolutely an honor to have been a part, a small part of making this park possible for our community. Um, this is the rendering, and it doesn't look much different than that right now. The plants are going to have to grow in a little bit. We've decided when we designed the park, there was a big desire for it to be uh, filled with native plants. And I'm telling people ahead of time just to help manage expectations. It's going to take a few seasons for native plants to really be established. But I'm so thankful for the city, the city's commitment to support that effort. And uh, I know that uh, additional resources are already being allocated to support that. And thank you so much. Um, we're gonna have, doesn't look exact, the playground doesn't look exactly like that, but it's gonna be a really fun playground. We celebrated almost two years ago exactly the groundbreaking of this park. And on October 11th, we're gonna celebrate the opening of it. We had over, it was the largest groundbreaking ceremony I've ever been to. I can't wait to see what the grand opening is going to look like on October 11th. Uh, Janae performed on a very small stage under a very dirty tent that had looked like it had been in the mud that day. She's going to be back on October 11th, uh, performing on that beautiful stage. She's so proud of her roots. I think it's incredibly appropriate to bring her back to open this park. Um, I talk to her on a pretty much regular basis right now through text and all the other things that she has going on, and she's just super, she just sounds as excited to be here as she is playing with George Strait this year. So. Um, I'm super excited to welcome her back and her, for her to join us in opening the park. Um, and she's also bringing Woodbox Heroes with her. Um, let's see if I have anything. Just a few more photos. This was not a professional photographer. This was actually me. Um, and then the grand opening celebration. So like I said, we'll have a happy hour at 4 o'clock that evening. Please put that date on your calendars. You will be receiving information in the mail if it didn't come this afternoon uh, about that. Uh, grand opening that day. We'll start at four. We'll have a few opening bands that we'll play before Janae comes on, and then um, we'll have a performance after she. So we're going to have it filled with lots of, lots of incredible music acts that night. And then on Saturday, the park will open with free tacos at 9 a.m. that morning, first come, first serve, and we'll have bonfires. I know bonfires in the daytime is different than bonfires at night, but it's safer. S'mores for the kids, pumpkin painting, Hay rides. Hay rides were a big hit last year, and uh, Jeff Rowe and uh, Mr. Nickerson have, have offered to drive the trailers that day, tractors that day for the hay rides. And it's just going to be a really wonderful celebration. And we're putting a lot of effort in to inviting the neighbors that live around the park that have called that park their backyard park for a long time. We're sending mailers to those, those homes to make sure that we don't miss inviting everybody back into the park. So, any questions? And, uh, does, does the stage happen to have a name to it? Not yet. One of our major donors said that they wanted a public input for a naming session. And so we are working on 
how to best do that. We've consulted with some of our neighboring cities that have successfully done that, and there will be more information forthcoming about that very soon. So if you have a name for the stage, um, we just thought it was difficult to name a space that we had not experienced yet. So we felt like we needed to get the park opened, and then that will be one of our upcoming activities is to name that, that space. Um, is there anything else I have to tell you? We have a big, big weekend this weekend in downtown Springdale. The art walk is going to be like you have never seen it before. Cat Wilson is leading our events department now and doing an incredible job. Um, Signature Bank, Banco C, is having their grand opening uh, at the same time, and they're going to be having some activations happening. So it's going to be a fun-filled night on Friday night, and then during the day on Saturday, uh, during the Art Walk and the Monarch Flight Festival, the Big Red Ball will also be visiting uh, downtown Springdale that day. So Friday night and Saturday are, days, are, are dates not to miss in downtown Springdale. And then we've already, we've already kicked off lots of planning for Christmas on the Creek and the Hot Cocoa Crawl that will wrap up this year's programming. And last but not least, we are working on what exactly the programming will look like in Luther George Park, what we will propose to you for Luther George Park and um, other supporters for that programming. And I will thank you in advance for your support uh, for that wonderful programming. So any questions? Okay, Anything? that's it. Thanks, Jill. I know some of y'all have a ball game to get to. So <laughs> thank you. Planning Commission report and recommendation, Patsy Christie. The first item is a final plat for uh, a subdivision now known as Magnolia Estates. It came into the uh, review process as Tankersley subdivision, but it's going to be finalized as Magnolia States, the Planning Commission reviewed this request. It's a 12.36 acre track. Planning Commission recommends approval. The title of the ordinance reads in order accepting the final plat, Magnolia States to the City of Springfield, Arkansas, declaring an emergency. Move the ordinance be adopted. Second. Okay, we've got a motion and a second to adopt the ordinance. Any other questions or comments? All right, anyone in the audience? All right, then we'll call for the vote. Carries 8 0. Move merge close, bid off. Second. All right, we have a motion to second for the emergency clause. Call for the vote. Carries 8 0. And as the usual case, it has an emergency clause because there's pending action. The next item is in conjunction with this. Uh, Final plat, there is a small section of this project that has frontage on Arkansas Highway 112. They are dedicating the right of way. They are requesting to have a waiver of street improvements to that. As you know, Highway 112 is one that's being redesigned and going to be done by uh, RDOT. We're not for sure whether it's even going to be at this location, but we are in compliance with the ordinance dedicating the right of way with this, and then we'll deal with it if the, the street is actually relocated. Planning Commission recommends waiver of the street improvements. The title of the resolution reads, a resolution approving a waiver of street improvements, drainage, curbs, gutters, and sidewalks, and set forth in ordinance number 3725 to Magnolia States, in connection with final plat 2411 of final plat. And it would be option one as Planning Commission's recommendation. Move the resolution be adopted, option one. Second. Okay, we've got a motion second for approval of the resolution. Option one, uh, any other questions, comments? Anyone in the room? All right, call for the vote. Carries 8-0. The next item is a rezoning request that was brought to the uh, this meeting rather than the second meeting of the month uh, to rezone property that came into the city from Bethel Heights when it was annexed into the city. This is the property that was owned by Bethel Heights and the request is to rezone the property from A1 and SF1 to Institutional District P1. The Planning Commission recommends approval. The title of the ordinance reads an ordinance admitting ordinance number 3307 
the same being the zoning ordinance of the city of Springdale, Arkansas, and the plat pertaining thereto, by rezoning certain land from Agricultural District A1 and Low Density Single Family Residential District SF1 to Institution District P1 within Springdale and declaring an emergency. Move the ordinance be adopted. Second. And a motion to second to approve the ordinance. Other questions or comments? Patsy, the, the, this isn't all the property we have in no, Bethel Heights. This is, this just is the, the ones property that's been developed. Right, yeah. right. Okay. It's the two that included where City Hall was and the and fire the, station and one other additional park. park land. Yeah, yeah, okay, gotcha. All right, call for the vote. Carries 8 0. Has emergency closed? Good emergency okay. clause be done. Second. Got a motion and a second for the emergency clause. Uh, call for the vote. Carries 8 0. The item number 10 on your agenda, uh, Council, is an appeal of the Planning Commission's denial of a variance. The applicant has requested that this item be tabled to the next city council meeting, which I believe will be September 25th. We'll be voting on that tonight, but right. he's been advised that if it's tabled, he'll have to re-notify adjacent property owners. So I would entertain a motion to table. So moved. Okay, motion a second to table. Can you guys get that up there or do we need to? Hmm? Will this work? All right, call for the vote. Table by a vote of eight to zero. All right, thank you. All right, uh, item 11 um, is our finance committee report and recommendations. Uh, Amelia Taldo. Looks like we have three agendas, I mean, three items on the agenda. We have item A, which is a resolution authorizing the mayor and city clerk to enter into a lease agreement with Impact Ministries NWA on property owned by the city of Springdale. This is presented by Colby Fulfer, chief of staff. I, I, I don't mind taking this. This is, uh, as we discussed at committee, it was recommended for approval. This is the old Bethel Heights City Hall, if you'll recall. We've been leasing that property to Northwest Arkansas Food Bank. They since have left and we have a church that is um, asking to lease this property. I believe we put a copy of the proposed lease in your packet. It's a three-year lease, $2,000 a month. They're responsible for all utilities, maintenance, and repairs. Move the resolution be adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the resolution. Any other comments or questions? Anyone in the audience? Okay, is a call for the vote? Carries 8 0. Item 11B is a resolution authorizing the execution of a contract for the City of Springdale 2024 Street Overlay Project. <coughs> this is presented by Ryan Carr, Engineering Director. So, just to recap, this is for this year's overlay project and I'm open to any questions you have. Move resolution pass. Second. Motion is second to approve the resolution. Other questions or comments? Anyone in the audience? Okay, call for the vote. Carries 8-0. Okay. Item 11C is a resolution authorizing the the submission of an application for funding through the Reconnecting Communities Pilot Planning Program, Community Planning Grant, and for other purposes. And this is presented by Patsy Christie, Planning Director. This is a grant application for planning purposes for Highway 71 from Sunset to at least uh, Huntsville. Um, 
we have, as of today, 25 support letters. The support for this project is really getting stronger about what do we do with Highway 71 as we move forward and look into the idea of it becoming a city street rather than a state highway. May the resolution be adopted. Second. Got a motion and a second to adopt the resolution. Any other questions or comments? Anyone in the audience? All right, call for the vote. Carry seven, one with one abstention. That closes the uh, fin finance committee. Thank you, Amelia. Jeff, did you take this committee at the whole? I did. Item number 12 was a meeting of the entire council as a committee of the whole, and we had discussion concerning uh, granting of a, a easement to the uh, water and sewer easement, and I'll allow Ernest to discuss that. It, the the resolution, let me read that title if I can find it. The resolution authorizing the grant of a water and sewer easement across property owned by the city of Springdale, Washington County, Arkansas. And it was forwarded from the committee uh, to the council with recommendation for approval. Ernest, if you could just briefly. Thank you, Mr. Watson. Uh, this is for Fire Station 4. It's a small water and sewer easement that's needed in order to assist with the construction of Fire Station 4. Resolution be adopted. Second. Okay, we have a motion second to approve the resolution. Other questions or comments? I was going to say Rick had to convince him as much tonight as he did at committee. Yeah. So. <laughs> Rick, did you have a speech right here or anything? You're okay. You're okay not giving it? Okay. Call for the vote. Carries 8-0. Thank you. And next, uh, item 13 is Police and Fire Committee and Chairman Brian Powell. Brian. Thank you, Mayor. We had two items come before the Police and Fire Committee, uh, and uh, they were both forwarded with recommendation for approval. First one is a uh, resolution, and I'll read the title of it, a resolution entering into a lease agreement with Stryker Sales uh, LLC for safety equipment and for Springdale Fire Department and to waive competitive bidding. Chief's here if you have any questions, and he may have some things to add to this. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Powell. I would like to clarify just a, <clears throat> some answers to a couple of the questions uh, that I got in fairness uh, to the council. The first one has to do with uh, the question was asked about expected service life. Uh, that is a product of uh, the FDA medical device approval process. And so the FDA approves medical devices with a total service life. The expected service life is how long it's expected to function uh, in our use uh, before the uh, propensity for problems to occur, maintenance to occur, and or uh, patient outcome affected failures to occur. Uh, that's why they have uh, service lives associated with their products. Uh, and why we feel like it's important that we don't exceed the expected service life going forward. Uh, the, the other thing is <clears throat> uh, that I think is relevant to the discussion is that uh, in the past, all of these, uh, you know, these products went through the procurement uh, selection and vetting process individually when they were purchased. Not all of the products were Stryker products when we purchased them. Stryker has since acquired uh, some of the companies um, like Physio Control that, that originally manufactured the, uh, the life pack products, the cardiac monitors, the AEDs, that, uh, those were acquired by Stryker. Um, and so uh, Lucas too, right, was acquired by Stryker. And so those were looked at from other manufacturers, vetted and procured before they were Stryker products. Uh, so anyway. Those were the, the clarifications I wanted to make. Do you have any questions tonight? Uh, for those of you that weren't here, let me just say that effectively this is a, uh, a five-year lease uh, program uh, at the end of which we can uh, roll another five years with new equipment, uh, so a replacement set at the midpoint at 2024 pricing, which is the huge selling point for us. When we replace the products, we're going to pay for them. 
um, whether it's uh, you know tonight or next year or whatever, and the cost is going to be what it is at that time. If we enter into this agreement tonight, um, we don't owe money until the last of the products is rolled out and in use by our department. That will occur in 25. So this, uh, the expense part of this will be part of our fire department 2025 budget. Uh, what we're asking for is to enter into the agreement before the October 1 uh, scheduled price increase by Stryker, which is 4.5%. Uh, we have other options at the end of five years. Uh, as the mayor brought up, it could be extended to a 10-year. Uh, we can purchase the equipment outright. Uh, and the buyback of our current equipment, it was included in the total price uh, that we're financing. There's a there's an offset too, there is like that you mentioned with some of our current currently budgeted maintenance that would be taken up if as we enter this as part of this agreement. That That's we right. Our our really known uh, budgeted amounts uh, that we are offsetting is uh, seventy five thousand uh, dollars. What we're also offsetting is unknowns, which is the increasing cost of maintenance that we're experiencing right now and the and, and downtime that we have right now. So at a minimum that four thirteen is offset by seventy five thousand dollars from a, a budget perspective. At a bare minimum, that's right. Yeah. Make a motion the resolution pass. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second to approve the resolution. Any other comments or questions? Is this already included in your numbers for your next year's budget? Well, it uh, theoretically, but it, it won't be. In, Cody has to create a capital lease account uh, line item for us. But yes, we're we're accounting for it'll, it. In our, it'll in be in budget. the proposed budget that comes to you. Yeah, yeah. In twenty four, we don't have that. We've been included the maintenance costs and and other things in other lines. So those will come out. Well, you're purchasing. Were your dollars for equipment lower because of this? The Purchase price is 2024 pricing, uh, so it's it's not essentially the purchase price isn't lower. The ex, the consumables that we purchase we get discounted on those. Uh, the huge benefit to us is we have guaranteed 2024 pricing uh, five years from today. But in the budget going forward, will you lower your your Expenses for equipment because we're oh, entering yes. into this contract. Yeah, absolutely. Do you know how much that is? Uh, no, because again, that's theoretical. It would depend on which equipment we were, we were replacing in which year and what. Yeah, the this is value. this is several different types of equipment, yeah. several categories of equipment. I can just tell you that the uh, the the total for purchasing just the life packs that are uh, or that's our. Life Pack 15s, which is our cardiac monitor defibrillators on the ambulances, uh, they told Stryker quoted us a price that exceeded six hundred thousand dollars. So if we just bought those, it would be six hundred thousand dollars. So because we normalized the pricing, we pay less this year than that price would be, but we get all the equipment, and then we pay the same amount over five years with all brand new equipment, and then have the option to have all the equipment replaced at 2024 price. Yeah. I guess to answer your question, Randall, it would depend on if if y'all didn't approve this, it would depend on what what you asked for in the budget. That's correct. At, to purchase. To purchase. And what the price is at that time. Like October 1, everything that we're purchasing goes up 4.5%. I'm, I'm hypothetically, since we're leasing this equipment, you won't have to purchase it for the that's next correct. five years. That's so that's right. what I was asking. Yes. Are we going to lose right. some money on that too? Yes. Randall, I know this next year we were going to, it was going to be requested to put 600000 in there for the replacement that he was talking about. The following year you might not have any, but then the next year it could be a million. So this just, it lets us have a good way of budgeting over the next five to ten years. It, it normalizes it all. So. Okay. Any other questions? Give you a motion a second. Okay. This will be a call for the vote. Thank you.
Carries eight zero. All right. Thank you, Adam. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, go <laughs> We're still on your committee, Brian. Go ahead. Uh, next resolution we have for us um, was uh, forward with recommendation for approval. Also, uh, Chief Gamble is here to uh, to talk about it. For those who weren't here, this is uh, concerning uh, 12 uh, new police vehicles. I'll read the resolution. A resolution authorizing the purchase of vehicles for the Springdale Police Department and to waive competitive bidding. Chief? So we uh, became aware of an opportunity to purchase vehicles uh, this year that would save some money for the city versus waiting in the, to putting them in the budget for 2025. One, we don't know what the 2025 vehicles are going to cost at this time, but we know they're new models and expect the price to go up. Um, these vehicles would save the city $43,596 for the price of 12 vehicles over the, the cost on the state bid. So basically we'd be saving the cost of one vehicle. We'd basically pay for 11 and get 12. Uh, so we felt we should bring this forward to the council and ask your permission to uh, get into a, a contract to purchase these vehicles from Superior Ford in Siloam Springs. Chief, do you have other cars in your budget for next year? We do have, we're requesting two unmarked cars in our budget. And Chief, if this were to pass or not, how soon could we um, take procurement of these cars and how long would it take for us to put them in service? These vehicles are available immediately for uh, delivery to the department. Uh, you you still got to bid out the We still have to bid out the, the equipment. equipment. We're expecting the equipment to cost two hundred about $205,000 based on educated guess from what we've uh, purchased this year. Uh, we do have to put that out for bid, and we're waiting to see what the council says about the vehicles before we go through that, would it through be, that process to bid out the equipment. That, there would be some cost savings in buying these vehicles on equipment as well because the 2025 models are different and the vehicle equipment for some of the stuff we need doesn't exist yet, so we have no clue what the cost will be because those haven't even been built. Those pieces of equipment we need to put in the car. I guess my question about that would, would the timing work out so that we could put the equipment in the 2000, in the 25 budget? That's up to the city council. I mean, if we, I mean is that gonna could, hold you up or? We can purchase the vehicles, we just won't be able to equip them if we put the, the equipment in the 25 budget. Okay. Well, we'd we have can, to set them somewhere and put them on hold. We can lick that cap. That's up, that's up to you guys. Up. Yeah. But we haven't gone through the trouble of putting out the equipment for bid until we know. Well, the, the reason I, I said some, I, I said some, um, I had a suggestion at committee that I've since found out we really can't do. And I want to be sure the council knows that. We had talked about the idea of going ahead and purchasing these to capture the savings and then reimbursing the 20 the 20 the the uh, general fund in our out of our 2025 budget and Cody tells me that's not something we can do so basically if we go ahead and do this I guess one way to look at it is that we're purchasing them out of the surplus of the money we've saved from the in the 2024 budget so it's still coming out of the unreserved general fund either way because whatever we don't spend out of our 2024 budget stays in our general fund. That muddy the water worse. Move the resolution pass. What, uh, what shape are the cars in? They, are you replacing cars? Or are you keeping those on? We're replacing cars. We'll take 12 out of service. Sometimes we have vehicles that have been totaled from a car accident, can't be repaired, and we've lost those vehicles and need to replace them. And other times they're just past their service life. They're costing us more to repair than they're worth uh, keeping. So you're We've selling got, those, well, I guess? I mean, typically we have over 100,000 miles on patrol cars before we get rid of them. And you're selling those? We'll, we'll auction those off. And after, that money goes after we get these outfitted and out on the street, we'll take them out of service and auction them off. And that money goes into the general fund, correct? Correct. So you'll be coming back to us for around two hundred thousand dollars in addition it's, to this. Yeah, guesstimate wise, it's two hundred five thousand dollars. We may be off a little bit. Some of the equipment is on bid, so we know the price of that, and some of it we have to bid out. So, 
But normally, vehicle purchases come in, out of, in the budget. Correct. Right. This the only reason we're bringing this forward is because we found out there were 12 vehicles sitting on a lot in Salem Springs. We actually contacted other dealerships and got quotes from them, and this is by far the lowest out of the quotes we got for vehicles. Uh, we actually found two lots in Arkansas that had 2,024 vehicles. One actually had was going to get us vehicles that are 2,023 models in Florida. We're going to pay to ship them up here, and they actually cost more than these 2,024s. But uh, we wouldn't have come forward if we didn't find out about the opportunity for these vehicles. Second. So a question first. You said uh, they're having at least 100,000 miles on them, or that's typical? That's typical. There's sometimes we have a vehicle that has a major problem that might be taken out of service before then because it might need a new engine or transmission or something that's going to cost a large amount of money, and it's got too many miles on it and the age of the vehicle. How, how many, what's the average age? Probably, uh, would you say? Over 10 years, typically. Yeah, over 10, 10 years. years old. I didn't know how And the unmarked to... cars we're bringing back to requesting are going to be 2010s that we're getting rid of. So if they, if this deal wasn't <coughs> a deal. If it wasn't available, we'd just come back and ask for the money in, in the budget. In the budget. Yes. Okay. I just felt that there was a cost savings here and thought I'd need to bring it forward. We do have a motion and a second. Can you explain that cost savings for me, Chief, one more time? I'm a little bit slow. How, how is it that it saves us $43,000? So the current state bid price on a 2024 equipped the way we purchase vehicles is $48,151. These vehicles are $44,518. So for the cost of 12 of them, it would save $43,596. And that is based on a 2024 what the current state bid price is right now. We do not know the 2025s have not come out on state bid. The 24s are still on there. So the savings is, is that you can get them a little bit less than what the state bid number is, that is which correct. we don't always buy on state bid though, do we? We typically get the state bid price, yes. There are sometimes that we get cars not on the state bid. We buy them directly from dealers. And correct. Kind of like what you're doing right now. Correct. Typically, Marked units are going to be at state bid price uh, because it's that's how they usually come out. These are leftovers. That's the that's the reason why they're cheaper. They haven't been sold in their 2024s. So that's why you're getting a four thousand dollar discount because they're just they're wanting to get rid of them basically. Correct. They're still available and they're and they're here. There's a there's a dealership in uh, Malvern that has sixty of them sitting on the lot right now. Yes, they're the ones that hold the state contract. So they order a lot more vehicles. And can we get those in January? Will you still have 60? I can't tell you they'll be available in January. But they won't be, they won't be at this price. Couldn't they be cheaper? Still holding them in They January? are they Typically. they were given the opportunity to quote us a better price and did not. Than than this other company. I would think though that I've been in the car business 20 years. If I've got them in January. I'm going to be wanting to get rid of them more than I am now, or if that makes sense. And, and you know where I stand. I'm not against getting vehicles. It's just I like doing it at the budget, but I'm not convinced that if there's 60 sitting there that there's not going to be 50 still sitting there in January that they're going to want to get rid of even worse. That's my point. I think that's something we can't know. Yeah, that's an unknown, and also Maybe just right. be aware that the state bid also holds a three dollars. I think it's three dollars and eighty-five cents per mile delivery fee that we're not having to pay. Well, we've got a motion to second. Do we have other questions or comments? Anyone else in the room? One more, Chief. <clears throat> Over the years, uh, I've tried to get you and other chiefs before you to try to come up with a number of what we need every year. Do you believe that number to be 12 or? 12 is pretty typical. There's years that we've had some, we've lost more vehicles. Like last year, we, we purchased 14. 14 last yeah. year. I think the year before we purchased cars. 12. Yes. Okay. I think the year before we purchased 12 more, last year we got 14. So I'd 12 say. is pretty typical of what we asked for. And, and are we growing our fleet? 
No. Pre stayed pretty it's steady. Stayed pretty steady. Expect it to grow? I mean, in sometime in the future, that's a possibility, but not at this, I mean, not in the next couple of years. I don't, not in the next, it shouldn't need to be next year now. How does, not to chase a rabbit here, because we got a motion to say, <coughs> but, but if we ever changed home storage, how would that affect the, how we did our vehicles? I mean, if we didn't have home storage, it would, I mean, we'd need less vehicles. Okay. Because there'd be more sharing going on. But then that's one of the things we try. That's one to of that's one of the perks that come to work perks, for the Springdale like Police Department. Okay. And it's also a, I mean also a deterrent because there's more cars being seen when people are driving home. Neighbor neighborhoods do like having them in their neighborhood. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Let's call for the vote. Guess what, Mayor? Well, I'm going to vote yes. Carries 5 4. All right. Let's see. We're at item 14, and I'm going to turn four, I think 14 and 15 both go to the city attorney. Thank you, Mayor. Item 14 is an ordinance authorizing the city clerk to file a cleanup lien for the removal of overgrown brush and debris on property located within the city of Springdale, Arkansas, and declaring an emergency. This is on uh, property at 16 North Kansas and a parcel on Davis Avenue. Move the orders be adopted. Second. Okay, we have a motion of second to approve the ordinance. Any other questions or comments? Does anyone in the room need to speak to this? All right, call for the vote. Carries 8 0. Move merge close, but no. Second. Okay. Call for the vote on the emergency clause. Carries 8 0. Item number 15, we're going to pull from the agenda because I've been notified by neighborhood services that we're going to have to clean this property again, so we'll wait and bring it all back at the same time. All right, thank you. Item 16, uh, we need to decide, nail down a date for our second council meeting in, uh, in September, our next council meeting, basically. Uh, several of us are going, going to be in D.C. On, on our regular Tuesday evening. Uh, and what we've done before is moved it to the Wednesday evening uh, of that week, which would, what's Seems the Seems like Wednesday worked good. 25th, worked good for everybody but Mike Overton. If I remember right. Me, then that's even better. Just out of spite, I will be here. Oh, good. <laughs> All right. Is that what y'all want to do? Does that take a vote? Okay. We're, we're good for that Wednesday, the... What's the date again? I'm not looking at 20, it. 20, especially since we've already tabled an item to that, to that night. So. Wednesday the 25th. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you all. Uh, any comments from department heads? I, the, I just wanted to make mention of the city council. We received a state grant from the opioid settlement. It's not a grant involving money. They give us a piece of equipment called True Narc going to help keep our officers safe when they're trying to identify narcotic substances out in the field. It's a device they can take out there and it can help them identify uh, fentanyl and other items like that to keep them from having to handle it with their hands uh, so they can use the proper safety precautions. Thanks, Chief. Anybody else? Uh, council members? I had a question on the, on the behavioral health facility on Wagon Wheel. Have they ask for uh, a uh, permit or anything like that. There hadn't been any movement out there, so. I haven't heard anything and Patsy left. Um, Do we have a timetable? We'll, yeah, we'll get you an to, answer. I don't yeah. know. You know, they, they were gonna have to do quite a bit of work. And uh, I don't know. Mike, are you aware of any permits or anything? Okay. Well, that. That answers that. They're not doing anything yet. Okay. 
And one other thing, um, the overlays, I believe we met at one point and we like prioritized overlay projects, if I'm remembering that right. Will we get some sort of updated map? Remember it was color coded and, and the streets and I loved that, but if we could get an updated version after. Yes, we're currently looking at uh, some companies to come in and map our streets again like we did in 2020 to uh, get the conditions of all of those so we can make another set of overlay plans based off of that. Lion's share of this this year that, that the council approved tonight is going to be Huntsville. That's correct, two-thirds. Yeah. Two-thirds of what you approved tonight is going to be your redo Huntsville. Mayor, I've got one thing to share. Uh, just so everybody knows, uh, the National Guard uh, is going to be operating out of the Springdale Municipal Airport next week. Uh, I believe it's Tuesday, Tuesday through Thursday. Uh, so if you see some Black Hawk helicopters out in the air, don't freak out. We're not under attack. Uh, but we'll put that information out to the public. So just wanted everybody to know that. I don't know. I hadn't thought about it. The committee meeting that's going to be because we can't first committee meeting in October. Right, because it would if we did it the first Monday be the seventh. The council's the eighth. Traditionally, we've done it the Monday before, which would be September thirtieth. But I didn't know if you wanted to do that tonight or wait till the committee meeting or the next. That sounds good meeting. to everybody. That's a lot better than having a committee meeting not before a council meeting. Okay. Well, well. Unless I see somebody stand up and holler and yell, we'll, we'll we'll plan on that too. So we can go ahead and have that. So, so the first the first committee meeting for October will be September thirtieth. Uh, let's see. Skip city attorney. Do you have anything that else? It. That was it. Yeah. All right. I don't have anything. We have a motion to adjourn. Thank you. We're adjourned.